Have you ever had one of those games that you just absolutely loved and adored? Going to bed and waking up the next morning and having the urge to play that game? And yes, that has happened to me before. A few times actually. But recently, it's been all about Destiny 2, preparing for the final shape. But let's take a trip down memory lane. Fortnite Save the World released back in 2017. But just after two months, Fortnite Battle Royale was released. And it took them two months to make. Fortnite Save the World is a PvE co-op survival game with building and editing. The first demo of Fortnite Save the World was first shown back in 2014. That was nearly 10 years ago. That is absolutely crazy. After its full release in 2017 and just after two months, they released Fortnite Battle Royale by Epic Games. The popularity of Fortnite Battle Royale came as a surprise that no one expected. This was only the beginning of something special. Fortnite gained the most of its popularity from its Battle Royale mode. 99 players drop onto a massive map and try to survive for the last man standing to get that victory royale. But there was a curve to it, not only 99 other players, but onto a massive map with the weapons, the building, the aspects of editing and using the map environment to your advantage. The Fortnite Battle Royale was slowly taking eyes as streamers and content creators, taking streaming to the next level. Ninja started playing H1Z1 PUBG, but he started in Halo as a professional player, but he decided to take a step back and enjoy streaming that's when fortnite became more his main game and he was also a pro player back in the halo days when people looked at gaming it's like sitting on your ass basically doing nothing but soon as we know it you can make a living and not only starting a youtube channel but to gain that respect that you made money from youtube and did it yourself it's all about doing what you love but fortnite battle royale was only the tip of the iceberg it was the beginning of something massive as fortnite battle royale became more attracted to more people and gamers around the world, the popularity of Fortnite, Battle Royale started to rise. Everyone was playing, I mean, everyone across the world as creators you know and love today. Ninja, Cypher PK, Dr. Lupo, Tim the Fat Man, I mean, Tim the Tat Man, Nick Merckx, Allie The streamers really helped the rise and the popularity of Fortnite Battle Royale, what made Fortnite Battle Royale so different from the other games. Fortnite had its first live event inside of Fortnite Battle Royale. It started as a spark of something starting big. The live events were would occur during the last few days towards the end of the season. It would lead us into the next Fortnite season. It would give us teasers and little hints and people would speculate all around YouTube. And it's ending up being this powerful story that just kept following and making content on it. It was a never ending cycle as the first Fortnite event changed how video games was looked at. My most favorite parts are playing Fortnite with the boys, getting those victory rails, finding that sweet spot of a landing spot. But my favorite was Tilted Towers. For Fortnite continued the trend of in-game live events, but they did it differently. Between live events, Fortnite would have quests inside of the game to gain XP and give a little deep dive into the lore of that season. It was actually really cool and awesome. Little started happening that sparked live events and started happening more frequently. Having a good season of Fortnite then ending it off with a live event on a Saturday when everyone was off school and work, and it was the perfect time to do it. Live events wasn't the only thing that sparked its success. It was creativity behind it. Season 2 of Fortnite of Battle Royale, the rocket launch. This was definitely the coolest scene in a video game, especially a live event experience together. Millions watching on YouTube and Twitch. After the first event in Fortnite, this was only the beginning of something huge. Fortnite would do these mini events inside of Fortnite Battle Royale, but it was different from live events. The cube, aka the cabin, was sinking into Loot Lake, turning it to a purple bouncy house, which is crazy. So this was happening in real time, and seeing Loot Lake being cut covered by this weird purple stuff and be able to see Kevin go into Loot Lake being melted into it. Even before this, I remember watching Ninja live and having this cube just appear in front of him during a tournament, Fortnite tournament. This was absolutely ridiculous. And this cube landing at this random location and this desert location in Fortnite, this was only the beginning of what was actually going to happen to Kevin the cube. Come here, we need to take a rift. I already know if I see one. Why is that lasting so long? Bro, is this, is this an event? What just happened? This is the tournament. What is that? Look, dude, I don't care. We're going here. What's happening? They calculate. This is calculated. This is absolutely calculated. Let's go up there. Give us 10 hundred. Oh my God, look at our screens. Dude. 
What the f- I, oh, That hurts, yeah. it hurts, it hurts. Dude, there's bandages. We gotta move. Okay, I've got, I've got some, I've got some. What the f- Ow, ow, ow! Don't shoot it! Get away from it! Get away from it! Kevin the Cube was slowly moving around the map, making laps beyond laps, and just where was he exactly going? People go to creative mode to follow where he would exactly go, see what he would destroy. Sometimes you go to Fortnite and destroy that one specific building that always got destroyed. Don't know why they did that, but it was kind of funny. I actually made videos on this on myself, seeing going to playground mode into creative and watching the cube move within minutes is it was a crazy feeling and it was a cool experience to see what the cube was actually going to do next what is this next move what does this cube mean what's the symbols mean what is the lore behind it being able to bounce on it having gunfights on this platform was like ridiculous it was kind of weird and funny at the same time but it can be a little rage inducing because you're just trying to get the kill but you're just bouncing all over the place but that is besides the point i kind of feel like this really sparked the, the fire of the pit i feel like this moment right here really started to light up something in, in the atmosphere it started to notice something you know creators started playing this more frequently people hop on the fortnite wagon you know check out this game fortnite man it's all about building and editing more people and more people play it play with their friends and other, you see other streamers playing this game and it makes you want to play it too but it got to the point where it got way too serious people doing dance moves in school and just it was getting out of control man it was it was crazy and i remember watching fortnite videos in school and it was just the, the cool thing ever but witnessing everything happening to fortnite and its rise of popularity and it and success overall just because of streamers and them playing the game and just so much it gained so much potential of what it actually it needed but i think overall i think uh fortnite did a very good job at that this led into the butterfly event everyone was sucked into this hole right where loot lake was just before when kevin got dumped into loot lake and created a bouncy house as players got sucked into the zero point this was a short event but it was cool it got everyone talking this was the second event inside of fortnite it really sparked a plug inside of the air what if fortnite was trying to say something what what if this is going to be the future of gaming fortnite was literally doing the impossible that no one else could do in a gaming history this sparked a huge spark in the sky that no one would have thought that any game could pull us off as seasons and seasons go on and days beyond days and hours beyond hours and years every new year's fortnite would have these small events celebrating the countdown of the next year and it was pretty exciting you have a little countdown fireworks happen da 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 you guys already know how it works the ball drops everybody's excited it's the next year hooray new year the fact that fortnite actually celebrated that inside of their game was actually pretty badass it, it, it was cool but it was actually kind of depressing because it was actually the new year so i didn't want it the, the year to go by that quickly but here we are then we got another event we got the ice king event and this turned the whole map into snow which led into the next fortnite season this event right here was absolutely crazy it just turned the map into like a snowstorm it just obliterated the map with snow and this led into the next season and this is what i mean by fortnite fortnite did a very good job of explaining the story inside of these events and actually hinting you into what the next season is actually going to offer us what what's going to change in this next season what people are going to speculate what's going to happen next what what is the idea behind this what's the lore behind it what's going to happen next you know it's just spitting out ideas and just conversations between conversations and that's what just led it to Fortnite success it just what is gonna happen next these in-game events were shocking to me because i never experienced the moment in my life you know playing Fortnite for so long then it's like having those moments where you cannot wait to get home on a friday talk to your friends the day before the event tell them how excited you are like what's gonna happen what are you gonna like speculate what's gonna happen next what's the story gonna be what's gonna happen inside of that in-game event and it just everything just goes down pretty quickly it's just reliving those moments with your friends and the streamers and just watching it with everyone as it happens it really sets a special place in your heart how games and just what game really got you into gaming and this is how fortnite sparked for me it was just it was just absolutely amazing and this really motivated me to really start my youtube channel and actually take it seriously the live events was a setup to every new season and it gives a clue to what's the next season was going to offer then we started noticing these cracks inside the ground every day every update they would just continuously have these cracks spreading throughout the Fortnite battle royale map
gap. It got so intense that people started making videos about it, speculations, going into the files, deep dive into the files to see what actually is going on here. This led to the unvaulting event. This let the community choose a classic weapon to return, the drum gun. This one personally was one of my favorite weapons inside of Fortnite. This led into the volcano live event. This event in particular destroyed a couple of known locations that we know and love. The best part is watching everyone witness this live event and seeing their reaction. No other video game at that time was doing this like Fortnite. It, it seemed like in-game live events became a Fortnite's identity. Leading to the final showdown, this event was so unique to Fortnite because it was people chanting to the Polar Peak monster versus the, the robot and who was basically going to win. And it felt like I was watching a UC fight in a Fortnite event, which was pretty crazy. Seeing the robot pick the sword from the zero point and just hit it, hit it through the Polar Peak monster and just do a floss it in just got me. This event in particular is probably one of the most craziest events that we ever witnessed inside of Fortnite or in gaming in general. No other game actually done this and after this event it gave me a new look of how I look at games as of today because this event was absolutely insane out of this world and I never seen a game do this but Destiny 2 tried to do this take on this unlike this kind of in-game event kind of style. It was pretty cool. It lasted a quite a long time. I know I keep saying this but Fortnite is the only game that can actually do this this was one of my favorites events inside of fortnite zero point sucked the whole map into a black hole and it was on a black screen for days and streamers cypher pk trying to break the codes seems like other streamers had a little insiders for when the black hole would be gone this whole one time thing where fortnite could actually pull this off it's almost like power goes out in your hometown you look outside and it's just all black that's how i got the same feeling of when this black hole started and it just really showed you how addicted we were to gaming or Fortnite in general. Because when everything was down, it's like, wow, I just realized. I didn't realize how bad I wanted to play Fortnite till after all this shut down. Not shut down, but went into a black hole. You didn't, you don't realize that until you can't play the game for a long period of time and you're waiting for the next season to come out. It really blows your mind. I think it was just pure excitement that we couldn't wait to play the game again and see what was holding for next Fortnite's adventure. Was it going to be a new map or was was it going to be like a remake or was it going to be something completely different? It led to Fortnite could absolutely do anything with this story. It had beyond what any other game had potential of. This game, Fortnite Battle Royale was the game to tell a incredible story through live events and really take a deep dive. But that was just chapter one of Fortnite. This has beyond what Fortnite was capable of. It just kept going and going. As of 2024, I think there's like three or four chapters by now but i lost count this is not going to be a live event breakdown i'm just breaking down the simple things that fortnite what sparked it for the community in the gaming how gaming changed fortnite forever to me i think fortnite gave me a new perspective how how i look at video games today i feel like they did the impossible of what they could do and with other games no other game could do that i know i keep saying that but no other games can actually do this i mean they can but not the way that fortnite did it because they did it first and it was unique in their own way but when i play other games outside of fortnite it's like man there's no other game is actually gonna do this you have that passion to play that game the next day but fortnite did it very cool and awesome that was basically the highlighted moments of fortnite and when it started to rise of popularity but after season x it slowly declined after we got shown the new map and all the hype was over but after that people still play fortnite after the new map and epic games continuously supported fortnite and as of 2024 it they're still continuing the support for fortnite the seasons being on seasons and scans and crossovers it just never ends we got star wars x fortnite we're gonna have Fallout X Fortnite here soon. We had the Mandalorian, but that was only the beginning. No other games are doing it like Fortnite from in-game events, from concerts to Fortnite creative, creating your own worlds in creative mode. People are making death runs like scissors. This created a new type of style of Fortnite that people were getting into. Fortnite creative decided to, you know what? We're going to make a Fortnite creative mode. We're going to make a mode where people can jump in, create their own map, you know, create their own 1v1 match, create their own, you 
you know, box fights where people box up and at each other and practice against each other against 1v1s or create a death run where you create these different courses and parkour objects to objects and jumping everywhere, bouncing off objects, trying not to die off of spike traps and really testing yourself to see if you, how long you cannot die and go for through these courses. And at what point death runs was actually going almost viral at one point in Fortnite because scissors started it all. This became the most fun thing that I've ever done actually when I but it was really raging trying to complete a map without dying or hitting a trap or hitting a certain object a different way it was trying to speed run the map and try not to basically die it almost reminded me of Temple Run 2 but like a Fortnite style you kind of have to jump platform to platform or use a bounce pad to pretty much jump and you go into this like zero gravity type of ability thing you try to jump to an object to another object without trying to fall off and basically restart that checkpoint all I gotta say is screw the traps. Those things were ass. Even more popular games like Only Up, which is an optical course that you had to go only up to go into object to object and there was shortcuts to do. Then if you made one mistake, you will fall all the way down and you had to completely restart. But someone remade that inside of Fortnite. Fortnite's creativity and creative mode is absolutely out of this world. Something can go trending outside of Fortnite and then someone can recreate that in creative, which was the coolest part about creative mode. What makes Fortnite so different from any other battle royale? I think I'll leave it to you to decide, but I ain't gonna do that. After Fortnite's huge success that led into other studios having their take on battle royale styles from apex legends apex legends actually took their battle royale style from titanfall which was inspired and i thought that was pretty cool and then fortnite basically did the same thing they took their fortnite save the world aspect of the game and they pretty much took that demo of the game and put it into a battle royale map and basically made it a battle royale it was cool fortnite saved the world and it took them two months to make a battle royale out of what they already have from fortnite save the world but they pretty much turn it on its head made a massive map and pretty much survive until you won and that was the idea but fortnite did it very differently I know I keep saying that, but they actually did it, do it differently than others because the building and editing and yeah, you get it. But Call of Duty set Warzone and we had Blackout into Warzone. Um, Blackout and Warzone were kind of identical. Blackout was actually supposed to be Warzone, but Activision didn't let them call it Warzone for some apparent reason. But now we know. So Warzone actually joined the hype of Battle Royale. Warzone wasn't really my type of game. Um, You pretty much you, you start with a, a pistol and you try to scavenge other weapons then you can get enough points by just by looting or grabbing enough money by looting the money or killing someone that already had enough money or you can go to a buy station buy your loadout that you already created a class before starting the match you can use that loadout to win the game or do some crazy and the gas mask got involved which was a really cool aspect of warzone it added that, that gas of closing in and your player actually putting the animation on his your player actually showing the animation of him putting the gas mask on your face Don't that in warzone while the storm and the gas is closing trying to win the game at the same time trying to navigate through the map and driving vehicles and just you know everything was crazy and warzone really spiked that battle royale too i think that's like probably like the most second battle royale game top played in history at, at this point because it really spiked Call of Duty and it, the rise of popularity, then declining again once they introduced bundles that cost as much as the game. But that's in for a later video. But H1Z1, PUBG, and the list just goes on and on. But Fortnite was the one that really stuck to its roots of Battle Royale. It was the game of the year. Of 2024, the game is still breaking records from LEGO Fortnite. I mean, LEGO Fortnite was out of this world. It wasn't your next, you know, best survival game, but LEGO Lego Fortnite was, it got everybody on board. It got everybody playing the game. It was so unique, you know, building your own house with Legos, but Fortnite style. It was kind of creative, had its own bosses. And over time, it's going to get more updates. I thought it was like the coolest thing ever. And I thought that Fortnite can ever do this. But with Unreal Engine 5, it's pretty much Fortnite can do the impossible. It can do so much things that no other games can do. And it's all powered by the Unreal Engine. Fortnite expanding its opportunities to branch out other than sticking to Battle Royale and that's what they did. You can go and love and hate Fortnite Battle Royale, but there were so many other ways to play from building to a zero build that kept Fortnite from being Fortnite. There were so many other ways to play Fortnite from building to a zero build. There were so many other ways, but eventually Fortnite added a zero build, which is a classic Battle Royale mode that took away building that gives that traditional 
battle royale feel that every other battle royale had but fortnite had building but but fortnite decided to take the opposite of releasing a game mode that that was zero build so it was basically classic battle royale with no building but it still had the fortnite aspect of it without the building and editing but it still kept it fortnite it's it's kind of mind-blowing how fortnite has come this far and icon series bringing out content creators into the game from cypher bk alia ninja loser fruit laser beam and so much more and it really changed how we looked at Fortnite as today. Editing and building added another layer of Battle Royale that we never seen before. Fortnite was the first one to do it. Nearly years later, they added no build, which made Fortnite give that classic feel if a Battle Royale with no building and editing. Editing and building added another layer of Battle Royale that never seen before. Fortnite was the first one to do it nearly years later. They added no build, which made Fortnite give that classic feel if a Battle Royale with no building and editing. The feel of Fortnite always did the impossible that no other game could do except make their own concept of what Fortnite did. After seven years, Fortnite Battle Royale continues to pull crazy numbers and release new seasons and battle passes, and it doesn't look like Fortnite will be slowing down anytime soon. All right, thank you guys so much for watching today's video. You can share your own story in the comments below. Let me know how you feel about Fortnite. Did Fortnite change how you look at gaming in general? Because it, it, it pretty much changed for me, and it's crazy what beyond what Fortnite can do. Thanks for everyone for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out. Don't forget to use code ITSPOZA in the Fortnite item shop. It greatly supports me and you can support me by using my code in your store with any purchase that you make in Fortnite. It's Buzzer Squad forever.